good news and I've got controversial news. On the upside, I'm about to show you the most technologically advanced car that BMW has ever made. What might upset you is that this is the new face of luxury BMWs. Crikey. So here it is, the i7, a new nameplate in BMW's history. But what you're really looking at here is the new BMW 7 Series, and it's a sign of our changing times, isn't it? In the olden days, a car like a 7 would have launched with a big V8 or a V12 engine. But these days, of course, electric is the priority. So while there are Normcore 7s coming as well with petrol and diesel and plug-in hybrid power, this is the really big deal, especially if you're a Tesla Model S, a Mercedes EQS, or a Lucid Air. It's the i7. But we'll come back to comparing the i7 to its rivals on spec in a bit because we need to talk about the looks. Yeah, if you thought BMW was going to tone things down after the XM, the iX and the M3, the 7 Series has got bad news for you because they're doubling down on it. BMW doesn't give a monkeys what you think of their styling. BMW says it's aiming for a range of cars that deliberately don't look alike. Their buyer's worst nightmare is a 7 Series being mistaken for a 5 Series. Each car is supposed to have its own identity. I'm not sure what identity this is. Evil robot hippo? The main idea up front is that they've split the headlights. So the main headlamp lives down here, and then the face of the car is kind of formed by these LED running lights, which are actually impregnated with Swarovski crystals, obviously. And then because there's not quite enough light on the front of the i7, They've illuminated the grille as well. And as you can see, this split headlamp motif is going to be the new face of all new luxury BMWs. They've already given the mighty X7 a 7 Series face transplant. Lovely. As we take a very long walk down the side, things calm down a bit because, well, this is a traditional saloon or a sedan if you prefer. Whereas the Mercedes EQS can be optimized aerodynamically for being fully electric, this is much more upright in a traditional saloon car because of course the 7 will have to contain engines and gearboxes and a radiator. Whether or not you like how this car looks is going to depend on where you're watching this right now. And I don't mean in bed or on the toilet. See, if you're European, possibly not, but apparently the American and the Chinese market, they're the ones that want more chrome, more grill, more attitude. So this is really giving the people what they want in the markets that matter. Now, back here, the badge, i7, xDrive, so four wheel drive, dual motor, and the 60, that's a power classification, don't worry about that. What you need to know is that this has got 544 horsepower, which coincidentally is exactly the same amount of power you get from the 740i V8. The battery is a huge 102 kilowatt hour job, which can charge at up to 20 kilowatts, meaning you can add 112 miles of range in about 10 minutes. Range? Well, BMW claims 382 miles or 615 kilometers. Now that's a lot, but the slipperier Mercedes EQS and the Lucid Air will go a lot further on a charge. This i7 will do 0 to 62 miles an hour in 4.7 seconds and tops out at 149 miles an hour. But if that's not quick enough, wait for the i7 M70, which is coming with over 600 horsepower. But what if you're not quite ready to go all electric? Well, under here, you will be able to find straight six and V8 engines, depending on what market you're buying your 7 Series in. But for us in the UK, all 7 Series will come with a charging cable. And that's because we're only getting the i7 and the plug-in hybrids. Now, the really interesting one of those is the M760E because that's gonna have a combined 571 horsepower, which should be plenty to whisk you between your meetings. Now you're back at the office. Okay, long enough outside, I think this is a limousine. The real action is in there, not in the cheap seats. Let's open these automatic doors and jump in the back. So what is all the fuss about in the back of the i7? I mean, yeah, got loads of leg room, lovely comfy pillows in the headrests and seats are comfortable. Look, even got cup holders, but no. What you really wanna be back here for is when you delve into your little touchpad and enter theater mode. And at this point, 
the blinds close, a Hans Zimmer soundtrack plays, and you get a 31 inch screen, which I am going to ask to shut up now. Let's just turn you down. Look at this, a ultra wide screen, 8K definition with 5G internet connectivity and Amazon Fire TV built in. Forget playing I Spy, this is the ultimate in rear seat entertainment. Now I'm operating everything back here by this smartphone that seems to have somehow melted itself into the door. You can do things like put the rear blind down. And then there's the clever seats as well. If I press this button here, this seat takes on a life of its own. That's now gonna fold itself completely out of the way. It obviously knows if someone's sitting there and doesn't squash them into the glove box. Then the back of it becomes a footrest and any second now, my seat will start to morph into a lounger. So you can pretty much lie down while being driven along, obviously you'll have a chauffeur, and enjoying whatever's on the screen. I mean, it's possible to completely forget that you're still in a, a car here, a road legal car amongst the traffic. This is, well, it's the full Netflix and chill on your own experience. <sighs> What worries me here is how Mercedes and Audi will react. The German car makers are permanently locked in a battle to out-gadget each other. BMW invents the X6, everyone copies it. Mercedes creates the CLS, the others have to react. So how on earth are they going to top BMW here? It might be easier to stop building cars and just fit a steering wheel to a movie theatre. Actually, before I get completely relaxed, we ought to have a poke around my chauffeur's new office as well. You might think that all the good stuff's been saved for the back, but I have to say this is a sensational cabin. Don't know where to start. Look at this seat control. It's made of glass. This speaker grill, I don't know, it could have come from an Egyptian pharaoh's tomb. Steering wheel looks futuristic. We've got this curved display that wraps around, so it's still a bit drive orientated like BMWs of old, but this has gone fully touchscreen. Don't worry, you can still use the iDrive controller down here, which I like, and then totally new graphics up front. The woods just up here and the lovely movement on these cup holder covers, just think that is fabulous. The vents have all been hidden away. You wiggle this little toggle and that change where the air blows and you've got touch sensitive controls on the polycarbonate finisher here to direct the air. And then there's things like the ambient lighting. It's all backlit through this surface. And as I cycle through the modes, for example, I stick it in sport, completely changes the ambience of the cabin. You can turn this down if it's a bit much for you, but yeah, I'm a bit of a tart and I really, really like this. Seat feels fabulously comfortable. We've got cashmere and wool upholstery. Very grown up, isn't it? Much more of a vegan interior vibe you can have in here. And yeah, as a whole, you don't feel short change in the front of here. I think I actually prefer this to the current S-Class. That's just one big screen in the EQS, of course, with the hyper screen, even more pixels. This feels more like a car, less of a pane of glass with a steering wheel in the middle of it, but it's welcoming and it's such high quality. The thing about these huge palaces that try to be the best car in the world is they're really crystal balls previewing the tech and features we all get on our normal cars in about five or 10 years. Maybe a load of what's on the i7 today will be in a 3 Series or even a Mini by the end of the decade. So the question for you to ponder is, which features do you like and which do you hope that BMW leaves behind? Now, go away because I've got some serious binge watching to do.